Hey guys, welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. My name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food. In my household, there's me, my husband, and our adorable one-year-old little boy. Hey guys, I am trying out a new recipe today. It is an orzo pasta with spinach and Parmesan. I'll make sure to link the recipe for you guys. Um, few simple ingredients. I've never cooked with orzo before, but it calls for orzo, um, chicken bouillon, Parmesan cheese, spinach. So I've got everything. I've got my fresh spinach, Parmesan, calls for garlic, the orzo, and then the chicken bouillon. Um, so it's a pretty, it looks like a pretty quick and easy recipe. I have to saute the spinach first, and then um, I add in the orzo and the water and the chicken bouillon. And so um, let me get everything started and I will bring you guys back. Okay, so I already sauteed my spinach in butter and garlic and I've set that to the side. And in this skillet, I've got some more butter and my orzo, I've got that browning. I'm getting ready to add in my bouillon and water and let that cook. And then when that's cooked, I'm going to add in the spinach and some Parmesan. So I will be back as soon as I have everything all plated up. Okay, so here is the pasta dish and Howard and I tasted it and we both really like it a lot. And I will say I am not a big spinach fan, but this spinach um, in this dish is really not overpowering. I would definitely make it again because it was so quick and easy to make as well. With it, I'm just serving some garlic bread. It's just plain old garlic bread, the Tom Thumb brand. I've already thrown the box away. So anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, I went to my freezer. In my freezer, I have this pizza from Outsiders Pizza Company, Detroit style pizza. This one has a sweet, um, smoky barbecue sauce, pulled pork, ham, bacon, green onions, mozzarella, white cheddar, Wisconsin brick cheese in a thick pillowy crust. So it comes in one of these trays. And really, I got this pizza for Howard because it's more up his alley. I really don't like barbecue sauce on my pizza. So we both sampled some of this pizza and thought both of us thought it was okay. I will say the barbecue sauce, and Howard said the same thing, is pretty sweet. It's very sweet. And I'm not a fan of sweet really anything. Um, but it has a decent flavor, but we both said we probably would not buy it again. So here it is in the tray. Um, I cooked it at 400 for 27 minutes, which is what the package uh, recommended. And so I'm trying to get in here so you can see the crust a little bit, but here's the crust. The crust is okay. To me, the barbecue sauce is so sweet and overpowering. It just kind of takes over everything else. I just wish they had done a traditional, you know, just tomato, sauce on here, pizza sauce instead of sweet barbecue sauce. So anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so I'm trying out something new tonight. I am making garlic butter fried rice, never made it before, but a long time ago, Howard and I went to this Korean restaurant and they had this garlic butter fried rice. So I've got some clarified butter in there and some garlic, I'm gonna add some um, green onion and then I have three cups of cold cooked rice. I actually made this last night so it's been uh, sitting in the fridge. And of course that is Harrison making all that noise. As you can see I added in my green onion and my rice. I've got this on a medium high heat. I'm just going to stir fry this around just a bit and then I'm going to add some garlic salt to it and maybe some sesame oil. It just depends on you know how it turns out. So I will be back when I have everything all plated up. Okay, so here's our plate and here is the garlic butter fried rice. It turned out pretty good. I did not end up adding sesame oil to it. I don't think it needed it, but I do need to play around with this recipe a little bit more before I get it right. I also made some broccoli rob as well. And then I am serving it with Korean style beef short ribs. I picked these up from Trader Joe's on a recent haul and I'll link it in the description box and 20 ounces. And I think this was 10 or 11.99. For some reason, I thought these came fully cooked, but they do not. 
And so the recommended instructions are to cook them on a grill. I did not. I made them in a skillet. I think next time I would definitely cook them outside on the grill. They really smoked up the house because of the marinade that's on them, the, the sugar and all that stuff. So it's really smoky in here. But they do have a good flavor. If you like Korean food, um, you'll like it. There's a little bit of sweetness to it. It's really good. I would definitely buy these again. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, I took some pre-cooked brisket out of my freezer that I needed to use. I got it from Sam's a while back ago and I cooked half and then left the other half in the freezer. And so with it, we are having brisket sandwiches and this is Howard's plate. He um, doesn't like his bread toasted, so it's just plain bread with mayo, avocado, um, he has lettuce and tomatoes, cheese. No on, lettuce. Oh, no lettuce, sorry. He has tomatoes, cheese, and onions on there. And then I just made some seasoned fries in the air fryer. This is my plate. I made a grilled cheese brisket sandwich. So I've got some cheddar and then I sauteed some red onions and I have them on there. And then I've got the brisket and then the seasoned fries as well. And then these are the seasoned fries that I use from Aldi. I cooked them in the air fryer and um, they actually turned out pretty good. So anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, we are having brisket nachos with that leftover brisket from the other day. And I am trying a new recipe. It is a two ingredient queso dip. So in my pot, I have two cups of heavy whipping cream that I have let heat up in this um, heavy bottom pot. And then to that, I am adding 12 ounces of pepper jack cheese. Now this um, pepper jack cheese came in the block, so it's not the pre-shredded kind. You definitely wanna make sure you use a block because the pre-shredded kind has all sorts of additives to it. So this is a block and a half of cheese, and I'm just gonna add this to my heavy whipping cream. Let me move that spoon out of the way. Just add in my cheese here. And from what I understand, according to the recipe, you can add any cheese that you want, but this is what the author of the recipe used. So that's what I'm gonna try. And I'm just going to stir this until it melts. And I will bring you guys back once everything comes together. Okay, so here are our brisket nachos, but let me show you this queso. I really like this queso. I put some in a bowl so you guys could see the consistency of it. And it only took just a few minutes for this uh, Monterey Jack to melt. I definitely plan to give it a try with some white cheddar or even just regular cheddar because it has a really good mild flavor. Now, if you wanted to spruce it up a little bit, you could add some pico in there or some salsa or something like that. But just to try, just to have a base queso recipe, really, really good. Um, so this is Howard's plate and he's got brisket. He mashed up an avocado and sour cream on his, and I am just a plain Jane meat and cheese person when it comes to nachos. I don't like any of the extras. And I keep forgetting to mention that Howard and I, um, Foodimentary Adventures in Food is finally on Instagram. So definitely go and check us out over on Instagram. So anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we'll see you guys next time.